Okay, I am going to attempt to make a video of the Proxmark 3 Getting Started Guide for our Proxmark 3 Easy. And uh, I'm just going to start with this incognito mode window because I figure that's the best thing to do is just kind of start from, from a place that has no uh, cookies or anything like that just to show how uh, the generic install and, and setup would go. So uh, when you first get your Proxmark, uh, there should be a sticker on the bag or label uh, that says to go to dngrs slash pm3 guide. Well, not E, let's do three. There we go. Uh, so when we go there, it takes us to the forum. And uh, if you're new to the forum, you'll see this big old uh, section here. We're gonna get rid of that and get right into the uh, getting started with Proxmark 3 easy. Now this video will probably go at the top of this uh, actual post. So <laughs> when you see it, it's probably gonna be playing right about here. But uh, I wanted to kind of step through the guide uh, I'm going to let you read this part if you're interested on your own time, but I want to get right on down to uh, this section here where we actually prepare the ground. Oops, preparing the ground. So the first thing we're going to need on Windows is something called Procspace. And Procspace is a special package that is like a Linux environment emulator for Windows. It makes running the Proxmark 3 client and doing all the flashing and firmware stuff uh, very easy to do on Windows because it's all meant and designed for, for a Linux environment. So this just sets that up for you. Um, I'm probably going to be updating this, um, this actual listing again because when I first made it, it was at uh, 3.7.1. But if we go here, we can see we are uh, currently, at the time of this recording, at 3.10. So I'm going to go ahead and just download. And you can see it's downloading, and it's got the little parentheses one, because I, I just did this and realized, hey, I should probably make a video of this. Um, so I'm just going to speed through time here. Okay, and we can see it's done downloading. And you might recognize this logo. That's the WinRAR logo, uh, classic WinRAR. So that's a compressor, decompressor um, file thing. I'm a bob and a dude here. So, and of course, you know, I mean, you know, maybe I should probably pay them. I think it's been about like 20 years. <laughs> so maybe I'll go ahead and give them a, a couple uh, coins for that. So. <laughs> Uh, so proc space, here we go. So what I'm going to do, and you can see I've already got um, the uh, C drive open here and then the working a working directory. So um, the important thing to, to note here is that uh, there's a lot of places you could put this, but I really recommend using a path that has the um, the 8.3 uh, notation on, on the old DOS directory file structures. Um, so the limitation of 8.3 uh, is it kind of important uh, because if you put it in a path that has spaces or uh, kind of a long path like uh, you know slash user slash whatever slash desktop slash whatever uh, it's gonna it, it, it has problems um, not guaranteed but it, it just seems to be way better if you just put it in either C slash proc space or I've just put it in a working directory so I'm gonna pull it in here it's going to decompress everything. And you can see I had an old proc space that I just did a backup uh, while we kind of do this uh, demonstration here. But it doesn't take very long to decompress into the, into the folder space. Okay, now it's just going to move the files from the temp folder into where uh, my target folder is but i actually will take this time to say that I, I did actually uh at one time i think it was probably 15 years ago i did buy a license for winrar but because it doesn't force you to to put it in um, i just never really bothered uh, with the iterations but um but i do have a license somewhere i swear i will, I will find it um but uh, or maybe that you know it's been a while i'll probably just buy another one but um okay so now we have our proc space folder and uh, let's just take a look at here and we'll just go down and it, you know this goes through how to do the extraction and so now you can see I put it in you know C working proc space and we're going to go ahead and open a, a folder here or a little um, command prompt and we're going to go to working proc space take a look and run me 64. So this should automatically set up proc space. 
So I find that interesting. There is an error here. Package config signature, unknown trust. Hmm, uh-oh. We'll see if that affects our deployment here. Take a little screenshot of that, send it to David. We have another signature error here. Not cool. Take another screenshot of that. Okay, so we have completed <laughs> what we had several um, package uh, signature issues. So we'll see what's happening here, but um, it, it may not actually affect it. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, there were a few packages that were not installed, but then it kind of looked like it tried to reinstall them. Uh, so <laughs> I wasn't exactly paying 100% attention. That did take some time. So we will see if this succeeds or not. Uh, but the first thing we need to do uh, now that we have the, in the space, proc space is set up. You see the, the PM3. Uh, this is the little prompt here on the flashing cursor. So now we want to pull down the repository that actually has a firmware. So I'm going to click that. And uh, this is the actual uh, source code for it. And we have different releases and things. But you can see uh, that you want to essentially do get clone. And then this is actually a problem of the forum. So it's put the title for the link. But the actual link URL you want is um, we're just going to go right click and copy link address. And uh, then we're going to go in here and say git clone. Actually, before we do that, let's just take a look. So in Linux, the directory command, uh, in, in, in DOS, it's dir. I think it supports dir. dir? Yeah, it does. Uh, so ls, uh, list. I don't know what it stands for, actually. Maybe list structure? I don't know. But list, maybe. Um, there's nothing here. So get clone, and then we're going to paste. Let's right click on the mouse. That'll paste in the proc space environment um, the link. So hit that. It's going to clone the Proxmark 3 folder into the Proxspace operating environment. So it's pulling down the source code. Now it's, it's important to say that this is the source code for the firmware, the client, all that stuff. So this is going to be the latest. Um, and uh, then we get to compile it and then push the flash update to the, uh, to the actual Proxmark hardware. And then uh, the client is compiled as part of that uh, compilation process. So uh, it's very important that your firmware on the hardware and the client uh, matches, which is why this whole process is important to be able to continually download and update the code uh, and then compile the new version. So now if we do list, we see there's a Proxmark 3. And uh, let's get into there, list. So now let's take a look at the uh, thing. So the next thing we need to do, this is a very important uh, part. So we need to uh, update the makefile.platform uh, file. And you can see there's a sample, makefile platform sample. Um, the makefile.platform file doesn't exist uh, yet. So we're going to use the Linux copy command, which is CP. And then it is case sensitive, so you need to do capital M, makefile. And I just use the tab key to finish, and then dot platform dot sample to makefile.platform. That's what we want to copy. So we make a copy of it, and then now we're going to do Notepad, which because um, there's no um, in Linux, there's a lot of editors, Vi, Nano. There's a lot of different editing options, but this is Windows, so we're going to use good old Notepad. Uh, make file platform, and I'm going to yank it up here on the screen so we can see what's going on. Um, so the first thing we want to do is see this right here. We say generic because we're not using the RDV4 version of hardware. We're using the easy Procmark 3 easy. We're just going to remove that comment. The, the hashtag is a uh, comment character. It means ignore anything on this line. Um, so we're going to put that comment here and change effectively the platform from RDV4 to generic. That's really all you got to do. And then you're going to file and save. Oh, not save as. Uh, file and save. So now that it's saved, we close. And that's done. We see the prompt comes back here. And the very next thing we're going to do, let's just take a look. I could probably update this because it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been other for quite some time. Uh, it's been generic. That's been the, uh, the correct thing. So we're going to do the make clean and make install. Now, 
you don't really need to do the clean part because we haven't done any previous makes here. So make is the process of compiling. So we're going to make it uh, J8. That is a um, essentially it's a command to say, hey, uh, use more available resources to do some parallel compilation. So it should shorten the amount of time you have to wait. And then all you're going to make all the projects and everything. So the client, the flash, the uh, the boot ROM flash, the image flash, all that. So make everything. Okay, now we have completed. It didn't appear there are any errors, so I don't know if those um, packages that were skipped in the proxy-based installation uh, had anything to do with compilation, so that's good. Uh, so now we're going to do list, and it looks basically the same, but we have some other options. Um, we have uh, the Proxmark 3 client, which is just PM3, and we have some flash commands that we can do. Now because uh, of our hardware that we sell, the Proxmark 3 Easy that we sell, it is preloaded with the Iceman version. And so that's very important because it has the Iceman bootloader and it has a, an older version of the Iceman firmware. But because it has the Iceman bootloader, uh, updating it is very, very easy. So uh, I'm just going to say current directory, pm3, flash all. So this is going to push the updated version of the bootloader to the Proxmark hardware. Now, if you just bought the Proxmark 3 Easy off of, say, Alibaba, uh, or from another vendor, it's going to have the main branch, the kind of the, the default branch of uh, firmware that comes with the Proxmark 3 Easy and not the Iceman branch. So that's going to make it actually quite difficult uh, to update. You can't just run a, f a direct bootloader uh, process. You might need something like a JTAG programmer or some kind of fancy software hurdles to go through, which we've developed <laughs> to be able to get this firmware onto the hardware for you. So this saves a ton of time and, and pain when it comes to updating a Proxmark 3 Easy to the Iceman branch. So now that it is running, we just say PM3 and it finds it and there we go. So now we can see we're running the Proxmark 3. Uh, it has the Iceman client, boot ROM, uh, and OS. They're all the same version. That is very important. Um, you can, if you ever have a, a question of what you're running, just hardware version, it's going to put out, spit out, you know, all this information here, um, you know, relevant and important information. So uh, again, for the firmware is the generic branch. That's important to know. The boot ROM is the, uh, this version we just uh, downloaded the latest uh, at this time. <laughs> and so is the OS and the client is also the same version. So very important to have all of that. So that is how you uh, update the Proxmark 3. Now, let's say it's in the future where we're, we're going to kind of extend this video a little bit. Let's say it's in the future and we're going to go back out to Proxspace here. Um, let's say, uh, you know, there's a, been a new release of, uh, of the firmware and you want to update, which is going to happen quite often because Iceman is being updated regularly, which it's a very active branch of firmware, a lot of new features and things coming out all the time. So uh, in a few months, you might say, hey, I want to try out the new version. Now, because you are set up and you've already got the, um, the GitHub repo cloned down, updating is actually very, very easy. So what you would do um, is you would say git pull. So you have to be in the, in the Proxspace environment and in the Proxmark 3 folder uh, where the Proxmark client and everything is. So the git pull command, it just says, hey, go out to the repo that we cloned from GitHub and see if there's any changes. And if there are, pull them down. So we hit that. Now it's not going to say there are any changes because we're up to date. But if, it, if there were changes, it would download all those files. It would show you the files that are different. It would dump all the uh, updates on. And then you would do make, whoop, spell it right, clean, and then and. You could do that, or you could do pipe, nah, just do and, uh, and then make J8 all. So when you do that, it's going to compile the new version just as it did before. And then when you're done uh, with the compilation, you then again have to do the push. So you would do not pull, uh, push. We want to push it up. <laughs> so we do dot, uh, PM3 flash all. And again, it will just push the firmware right up to the hardware. The client will automatically be updated when you do the compiling with the make all command. And you'll just be all up to date. Your client will be up to date. Your firmware and bootloader will be up to date as well. So uh, very easy to, to get to updates once you're on the Iceman branch. So that is how you do it. And now you can, lead, if you want to, you know, go through and read all the details. Actually, let's take a look. Let's take a look here uh, because there is one interesting little thing. So yeah, updating firmware in the future. It just tells you what I just told you there. Uh, this isn't kind of interesting. So uh, Proxspace is basically an, a Linux environment. 
And what you can do is say, let's say when you want to, when you get into the Procspace environment, you don't want to have to then go CD into the Procspace <laughs> folder and then run the Procspace client. You can just um, tell it to do that automatically. So ls-la, that shows me all the hidden files, everything that's here. And what we can do is actually create a file. Uh, or actually, it's there already, but we're going to update it. Uh, so this is uh, the ba bash is the shell, or what we're seeing here in the Linux environment. So we can edit this uh, file, and we can add a line to the bottom. So let's go to the bottom here. After it does all the stuff that it's going to do when you first uh, launch Procspace, and we're just going to uh, essentially say Procsmark3, and then the PM3. Now, again, this is a problem with the forum. It automatically detects the word Proxmark3 and makes a link out of it, so it kind of bre breaks it a little bit. Uh, I might have to look into changing that somehow. But uh, essentially, we do Proxmark3 PM3. Um, so just adding that line, I'm going to say added by me. So again, the hashtag is a little comment uh, tag, so it ignores this line, it's a little comment. And then that just says execute this. Uh, this client once I log into Procspace. So we're going to save it, close it, and then let's say we exit. We're going to go back to the DOS prompt. Oh, see, <laughs> it just bumps me right straight back into the client because I want to exit out. So let's get out. So now we're in the Procspace working directory. I'm going to run me64. I go in. It takes a little bit to launch, but once the Procspace environment is running, it should go right into the Proxmark 3 client, just like that. So now we skip that kind of little annoying thing of having to go into the Procspace folder, then run the client. And if you ever want to just get back out to Procspace, you exit, and now you're in Procspace, and there's a Proxmark 3 folder. You know, if you want to do the get pull or whatever, you can do it here. Um, but yeah, just exit right back out. Um, I'm not sure why it's doing this double loop, actually. That's kind of interesting. It should be exiting straight to the DOS prompt like that, but I don't know. Um, little quirks, little quirks, fun things. So anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap this video up and then stick it at the top of this guide. And hopefully that'll be uh, easy for, for those of you who don't like reading giant walls of text. <laughs> All right, thanks. We'll see you later. Bye. The site might be called Dangerous Things, but remember, safety first.